So in this segment, we're going to be talking about this very long and convoluted article from Nick Timothy, which I believe he used to work for Theresa May. He was a Theresa May advisor. You know, he comes out with Brexit was supposed to take back control of immigration. It hasn't. Well, it really has because the points-based system is meant to be based on the shortage occupations the UK has, has in the country. If you meet, if you have enough points to come to the UK, you can come to the UK. Like it's generally how it's meant to work. This guy has no understanding of it, um, evidently. Um, neither do the Tories, to be fair, because they put a numbers limit on um, immigration, but the points-based system doesn't allow them to do that. So he says, immigration can be a complex subject and the public debate around it can be deeply dishonest, probably poisoned by Tories. From bringing skills and enterprise to adding to the cultural um, cultural capital of the country, immigration can bring great benefits, which is true, but in large numbers can also bring great challenges. So the flows must be controlled. It can, it can do in large numbers, it just depends on who you allow in um, and how much they are kind of willing to not re not just integrate but accept kind of the laws of the country they're moving to, I suppose. Not accept as to say they have to be subservient to everything, but to be involved in, you know, like certain people who don't believe in gay rights, um, if you move to a country that does, then you have to accept that, you know. you don't, I'm not asking you to, to hold hands with people and be like, yeah, I love gay people, but to be tolerant of, you know, gay people and other people that, you know, your religion or your culture may not necessarily accept. You have to respect the laws of the country you're in. Decisions ought to be made not in the interest of foreign nationals, immigration lawyers or supernatural, uh, natural, super national organisations, but the British people. So let's break that down. So foreign nationals talking about people trying to come here, immigration lawyers, you know, those do-goody lawyers that um, Pretty Patel hates, or supranational organisations talking about the EU there. But the interests of the British people, and evidently the points-based system is meant to do that. He says there is of scope. Uh, there is, of course, huge scope for disagreement in the practical implementations of these principles. We can differ over the extent of the need for foreign workers. Uh, for example, when there is a dire lack of technical and vocational education and training for already for people already living here, which is true, there is a dire lack of training for people, and getting certain courses is really expensive. Um, you know, I keep citing this. My brothers are on a um, carpentry course, it's about seven hundred and fifty pounds a year. Uh, that's for the level one course, and I think the level two course is about fifteen hundred pounds. How many people actually can afford that much money? The college that they have to go to is in a rural area, which is hard to get to unless you have a car. So, again, you know, it's just really difficult to actually skill up in this country. That's something that has to be looked at. Um, he says we can argue about the desirability of allowing colleges and universities the right to sell long-term immigration. He says not just education, but hundreds of thousands of foreign students. I mean, they sell. You, they sell you, you can't you, you can't study in another country without immigrating there it doesn't make sense unless you want to do everything remote which doesn't work for a lot of courses and is not a good experience especially um when my brother was telling me there's a there's a guy on his course in uh, university who lives in china and he couldn't read certain articles from the guardian because it was banned obviously they're gonna have to immigrate here if they want to study here you absolute joker this guy Regardless of such differences, it's difficult to deny that our immigration system is failing. I mean, given the fact that we have shortages in a lot of areas, yes, you can argue that. It says, despite Brexit and the end of freedom of movement rules, arguably the end of freedom of movement has made it way worse. It's going to be hard not to argue that. It says, we are yet to see meaningful post-Brexit immigration statistics. In 2020, um, thanks to the pandemic, net migration fell by 88%, just for 34,000, and to some rabid racists, that'd be too many. He goes, we can already see from the number of visas issued that immigration is about to soar again, probably to record highs. And depending on which part of the kind of conservative or libertarian aisle you sit on, immigration is either a really bad thing because foreigners or a very good thing because of labour, you know, workers. Comparing 21 to 2019, work visas are up by 25%. And that's that would be down to um, potentially EU workers as well, because they would still want to come here to do certain jobs. Um, and the fact is they need a visa. So visas were always going to go up because of Brexit. Family visas are up 49%, and that could be down to um, people coming back to the UK. So I've read, you know, we've covered stories about uh, British people coming back with their uh, partner who um, may be an EU national who have to get a family visa so their kids can come and their significant others can come to the UK before they can get permanent residency here. And student visas are up 52%. Of course, with the end of freedom of movement, um, there are going to be a lot more people who, you know, in the EU or outside the EU who are going to need student visas. That's not a surprise. 
the only interesting bits are there are more there are more than a quarter are, um, of foreign students are Chinese, which there are a lot of Chinese students who come to the UK. I have no issue with that. Um, anyone who does is a bit whack. But the number of Nigerian students is up by 415%, and Pakistani students are up by 256%, and Indian students are up by 164%. Now, I think this is because, right, these you know students would have needed visas anyways to come to the UK, you know, regardless of Brexit. But you know, these you know EU students are going to be less likely to come to the UK, and I read stories about that as well because they're going to need visas and other things to come here, um, and you know they're going to have other issues coming here, and they're going to, have to pay a lot more in fees. Um, I think it's about 13k for um, non-UK citizens, right? But if they want to travel, if they want to study in, say, Norway or Finland or Sweden or any other EU country, I've just said three Scandinavian countries, say Germany, for example, they won't need to go through anywhere near as many hoops. They just need funding. That's about it. So that's why, you know, you can see kind of non-European or non-EU um, visas go up so much. And no doubt, you know, a lot of people are going to be annoyed, more Indian people and Pakistani people. It's a lot more brown faces. And wasn't there a guy who voted Brexit because there are too many brown faces at Tesco? He's going to be real happy about that. Even as the government ended um, European free movement rules after Brexit, a decision-driven pollsters agree by concerns about sovereignty. So they ended freedom of movement because of you know what people wanted in this country and what the poll said because they didn't understand freedom of movement. They thought they would keep it for the proper Europeans, whatever the hell that means. Democratic control and immigration. Johnson demanded a more liberal policy, and that's to do with the shortages. You know, we've got I think four hundred thousand vacancies in the country. Or something like that. And if you train one person just to move from one field to another, you haven't dealt with the vacancies. He says uh, work permits were unlimited and the definition of skilled work was watered down, which isn't a surprise. The shortage occupation list was extended to allow the recruitment of foreign workers in yet more trades. Employers were no longer compelled to seek workers from the residential population before recruiting from overseas. That's not true because they still have to pay for things like visas and other things in order to get foreign nationals to work here. So they will still look to you know people in the UK first because it's way cheaper for them to do that. I mean, rather than having to pay for someone's visa potentially, pay for their application and sort everything else out, it's far easier to get people in the UK. Predominantly this will happen because of dodgy um, employers, but also because we might not have the skills in the UK to hire these people. Foreign students, uh, whatever their qualification, were given the right to stay and work in Britain at the end of their courses, which is fine. If you can find a job after graduating, which is incredibly difficult, um, why shouldn't they have the right to stay here? It makes no sense. The points-based system the government likes to point out is inspired by Austra the Australian model, and that's something they talked about a lot during the referendum and also in the election. We'll go to an Australian-based point system, which no one actually explained really what that was, apart from if you have certain qualifications, you get a certain amount of points. That's the only thing they told us which focus groups tell them is widely believed to be tough because focus groups, you know, the people weren't actually explained to how Australian points-based system works. He's about to explain it now. Australia is uncompromising on illegal immigration. Its policy on legal migration has been liberal for decades, with its per capita immigration higher than even ours, because once you have the points you need, you can come into the UK with no problem. A points-based visa system surrenders the principle of control. No, it doesn't, because you're, you, the control is, if you don't have enough points, you can't come to the UK. So if you create a system where if you have enough points, you can come to the UK, that is a system of control. Like That's what these people don't understand. When migrants want to come to the UK, if they have the requisite number of points, they simply win the right to come, which makes sense. What more do you need? If you create a points-based system which says you need, say, 10 points to come to the UK and you have 10 points, what other barriers are you going to put in the way apart from criminal checks? So it makes no sense, honestly. He says, and the other principle of control, the very promise of Brexit, remember, will be further eroded by uh, trade deals by the Prime Minister, um, the Prime Minister negotiating, because they have given away visa access in some of these trade deals. I think the Australia would be one of them, and India will be another one. Johnson signalled his agreement with further liberalisation for Indian workers and claimed, despite a probable record immigration this year, we're short to the tune of hundreds of thousands of workers in our economy, which is true, because unless you're going to force unemployed people into these jobs when they don't have the qualifications for it and for whatever reason can't take these jobs, you're not going to solve the problems. All you're going to do is create a more toxic environment for people. So what do you do? You either train people in the UK, which takes time, or you get people from abroad who already have the qualifications necessary. The second one is far easier. If we actually look at how to train people in the UK, yes, it will take time. We can do something there. But, you know, successive governments, Tory ones, don't want to do that because it costs money. It costs taxpayer money to educate people. He goes, this is not true about the vacancies. 
But then, of course, the debate about immigration has never been honest, probably because of people like you, my friend. Advocates of mass immigration pretend that we have always been a country of immigrants. Now, we're done with this, right? We're a country, we're an island, okay? To get to this island, you have to cross the water. You have to immigrate from somewhere, right? We are a country of immigrants, just like America is, for the most part, anyways. <sighs> These people, man, honestly, just want to just break just break people's brains. Who reads these articles and think, oh, yeah, Nick Nick Simmons or whatever his name is, Nick Timothy, has a great point here. Me. Who are these people? He goes, we could reasonably oppose skilled workers coming here to contribute. Why would you do that, though? That doesn't make any sense. If you have a shortage of lorry drivers, right, and you say, oh, you, you need 10 points to come here if you're a lorry driver, they have all 10 points. It's on the occupation shortage list. Why would you stop them from coming here when you acknowledge the need for these people? Unless you're doing it based on skin colour, what other reason do you have apart from criminality? He goes, but under the points-based system, skilled workers are not um, only astrophysicists. You know, obviously, an astrophysicist um, seeks to understand the universe and our place in it. He goes, but under the points-based system, skilled workers can be bricklayers. Bro, can you actually... Do you know how hard bricklaying is? It's a skill... It takes time to learn. It's very labor intensive to do. You know, trying to put down bricklayers because they're not as smart as astrophysicists. Like, it's ridiculous, honestly. He goes, who could oppose the brightest and best coming to use their talents here? Which they're not, they're not, you know, we're not winning any Nobel Prize um, winners here in the UK. But the majority of foreign students attend institutions outside of Russell Group, um, uni uh, Russell Group University. So that's the top 20 universities. Like, who cares if people go to lower universities, especially when um, I read another story that came out. I think it was this week where universities look at your grade above the university that you've gone to. So if you get a first, I say a top 30 university, that's better than a 2-1 from a Russell Group university. Um, potentially, so it's just ridiculous. They're like, oh, they don't go to Russell Groups like me. They're not Oxford graduates. They're not stupid. This guy, man. I guarantee you, right, those people who didn't go to Russell Group universities are far more productive to this economy than you will ever be, pal. There's three quarters of the increase in student visas from 2019 come from applicants to lower quality universities. Again, who cares? All that have the right to work here afterwards, whatever their qualification and whatever their job. And if they don't find a job, I think it's within two years or a year, they have to leave. So again, if they can find a job after graduating, what's the problem? I don't get it. If they have the necessary skills to meet the shortages the UK has, what's the problem, pal? He says, but nobody has ever made the argument for such rapid population change on one election. This is his problem. He goes, you know, he essentially he's arguing that Brexiteers were lied to about the Australian points-based system. He goes, and this includes the Prime Minister who has no mandate for the policies he's pursuing. He does, though. He ran on an Australian-based point system. He did say that he would bring immigration down to the tens of thousands, but so has Theresa May. So did, I think, David Cameron. So again, they lie in their manifestos. No surprise there. His manifesto pr uh, promised overall numbers will come down and we will ensure the British people are always in control. You know, we gave the British people, right, elect officials, we cede away a certain amount of control to them. OK, within the law, they can do things. They can also change the law. If the government are saying we're going to once you have the certain requisite amount of points, you can come to the UK. That's what the electoral the electorate has given the prime minister when he said he was going to run with an Australian points based system. He's implemented the Australian style point system. There's no real issue here. You can say he's lied to the public. That's fine. But if you want to bring immigration down to the tens of thousands, right, you're not going to fulfill all the vacancies we have in this country. So, it's just, you know, especially with the end of freedom of movement, we already had problems, vacancies, skill shortage in certain areas. Unless the government take a full approach of we're going to try and train as many people as we can in these trades we have shortages of, you're going to continue to face problems. Even with the lorry drivers, there's still problems with them, you know, the newly trained ones trying to get insurance. You know, if you don't have a certain amount of experience, insurance companies don't want to back you. Which is sad, but that's the reality of it. So what more can you do? Um, honestly. He says, they know from bitter experience the cost of mass immigration. You know, th th I'm not going to deny there are issues. You know, there are certain people that come to this country that cause problems, but there are also people who live in this country that cause problems. Th you know, the only thing you can do is have robust systems to deal with criminals. And if they commit, you know, heinous crimes, they should be deported. That's fine. But, you know, just as that, you know, if there are Brits that cause problems in other countries, they should also be deported from those countries as well. And we should have to deal with them. That's fine. I have no issue with that. But the simple fact is, you know, acting like, you know, the UK hasn't benefited from mass immigration is a joke. The UK still needs mass immigration to deal with all the vacancies we have. He says they know the problems caused by rapid social change. Like what? The stark cultural divides, that can cause problems. But there are also a lot of people in the UK that have 
extremely homophobic views and racist views, amongst other things, anti-Semitic views within the UK that already have these problems. And you can argue, oh, what's the point of bringing more people out of these issues? Like, you're not going to solve that with a visa system. But that's where you allow integration. That's where you allow education, because you can resolve a lot of those problems through education. It's not hard. Those pressures on infrastructure, how do you solve those? You improve the infrastructure in the country because without the amount of builders and architects and other things that we need to build infrastructure, you're going to have problems. Public services, Tories have defunded public services for over a decade now. That's your fault, not anyone else's, not the fault of immigrants. We've, we've done a covered story with nurses and doctors leaving the UK you know, former, you know, EU doctors and nurses leaving the UK because they don't feel welcome here. That causes more problems in the system when you create a system which doesn't train enough people as is. When people leave, it makes it worse. Housing shortages, you don't build enough sustainable housing. That's on you guys again, especially when we don't have enough builders and other people to build um, the requisite amount of housing we need in this country. Again, freedom of movement was another thing that helped. High rents, which again, if you wanted to stop high rents, stop having, you know, stop allowing landlords to buy unlimited houses. That's how you solve that. If they if they don't if they can't buy as many houses, the housing prices will drop slightly, and it will help that. Job displacement, moot point, and the suppression of wages. I think freedom of movement constitute a one percent wage cut to the lowest earners. But you know the simple fact is, without freedom of movement, the cost of everything goes up. You know the the whole process, the whole shebang goes up. All of the imports go up in price. All of the imports go up in price because we have a shortage of lorry drivers, we have a shortage of shop staff, we have a shortage of manufacturing, we have a shortage of everything. So all of the costs have gone up. To, to argue suppression of wages, you might be able to argue 1%, but in terms of the net impact on wages, it's either negligible um, or it's that you know EU workers, you know, freedom of movement actually helped um, keep wages you know, at a decent level because of you know without them, the cost of living spirals. When they realise they have having voted to take back control that the PM has given it away, the Tories will find there will be hell to pay. And again, I don't think they'll care much. I, I really don't. I don't think the average voter will care too much. Um, maybe some of the racist, the, the racist ones definitely will. But we have, you know, the government will say we have an Australian points-based system. You know, these are skilled workers coming here. And, and the public will eat that up because we need skilled workers. Because it's going to be very hard for you to argue against people with the requisite skills coming here unless the person you're speaking to is a racist. But yeah, you know, Nick Nick Timothy, whatever the hell this guy's name is, what's his name? Let's go back, let's find out who this douchebag is. Nick Timothy, absolute joke, pretty sure he worked for Theresa May and, you know, had a Theresa May's government end really badly. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Sorry, it's been a rambly, more kind of frustrated article. It's just been a long day um, and this guy likes a load of rubbish. But um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.